What's up, YouTube fam? How you guys doing? Clint Lund, back with London Mix with a really, really cool episode today, guys. I think you're gonna like it because it's a little different. We're gonna do this from start to finish, guys. We are gonna buy a bike off Craigslist, and uh, what's really specifically kind of s interesting about this is we are looking for the worst bike on Craigslist we can find. Obviously the cheapest we can find it for, but the most potential into making it an amazing bike. So we want something modern. I'm thinking I want something two stroke, just because some of the cheaper four strokes, we're talking early 2000, uh, you know, Yamaha, Honda, uh, Kawasaki, Suzuki, KTM, they just were not very good, nor can they be made to be something extremely excellent. Um, so that kind of puts me towards a two stroke. Obviously I've had quite a love for two strokes for some time and that's been no secret here on this channel. And uh, so I really want to find the crunchiest two stroke I can possibly find on Craigslist. Doing that is not gonna be so easy as, as just going on there and looking for the most beat up one possible. I wanna talk to the owners and I wanna see I want to make sure that they've been neglected. I want to make sure that they've been sitting outside for a long time. I want to make sure that they need a lot of work. And I want to make sure that we can get them for as cheap as possible, where the owner just knows that he's getting rid of an eyesore more than he is uh, trying to, you know, make a lot of money off of uh, something that has potential. Having said that, I got my phone here. We're going to log on to Craigslist and we are going to find out exactly what is on the market right now and uh, see what we can buy. Now, obviously, for this, I have to make sure and uh, protect the identity of the seller. So I'm not going to be showing any names, phone numbers, or email, or ways to contact these guys. But uh, it is still something I want to do over the phone here with you guys. Because uh, I think this is going to be kind of fun. Uh, I would like to find something here locally. I don't want to really drive too, too far for it. Uh, I want to be able to keep the cost down as much as possible. I know I already said that, but what I'm, the reason is if we're gonna be buying like literally the the roughest, nastiest dirt bike we can find, well, they shouldn't be asking a lot for it. I mean, honestly, they, they should just be like, yep, it's been out in the barn for a thousand years and we're just getting rid of some, you know, things that are taking up space. So that's kind of what I'm hoping I could find. So in the meantime, I'm gonna start looking through these and then let's see what we can find. It's gonna be fun. So for instance, when we're looking on Craigslist here, this is just the first one that popped up, uh, KX250, it's a 99. That's kind of around the years I was looking for, kind of like late 90s, early 2000s. Um, but I definitely want something that's just trashed. So we are gonna type in. When it always, always works, not need a needs and we're gonna search needs because more than likely we're gonna find something that needs <laughs> a lot of work and some of these are scams I mean a thousand bucks for a 15 R3 unless it's blown up so I'm gonna scan through some of these and see uh, he's not asking a dollar for that. There's no way. 2010, uh, 4100. These guys, man, they're just so sneaky with how they put up bikes for sale just so you can click on it. So, 83, XR200, no. Let's see, we'll find something here. Uh, see that that's what I'm talking about so like a CRF 450R for two grand that's more than I'm wanting to spend it's an 05 it's the year right before they got good 06, 07, 08 are really the best for the carbureted uh, 07, 08 to be more exact uh, no so I'm going to keep digging here easy 125 for Needs car rebuilt. I hate when they don't put any pictures. That really is a big turn off to me because I really want to be able to see the crunchy state that it is in. Oh, three wheeler, 200X. Wouldn't that be fun? 
I think I need to do a three wheeler or a 450, or excuse me, not 450, but a TRX quad or something like that. Uh, just needs new seat. Hmm. Looks like it needs more than a new seat. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like it needs a lot more than a new seat. Some people. But it's a four stroke. I mean, it's a 610. And it's down in Hollywood. Holly weird. 99. Talahan. 202 and back fees. Non running engine. Won't turn over. Hmm. These are known for sucking valves, huh? So it might have a, a, lot, a valve locked up and bent inside the cylinder. Ooh, 89.510. Again, that's all the four strokes. I really, really would like to find a two smoker in here. Just uh, feel like building two strokes is a blast for me, guys. Uh, let's put a KX500 in it. And a 60. Let's go. No, no, no. Geez, a lot of scooters. Let's see. Oh, one. Oh, that's not bad. For 800. Let's see. I got to hide the number here. Needs engine work. That's why it's a good price. Sounds like top and cleaning <laughs> repairs. I'm not going any lower on price, so please don't even ask if it's negotiable. He wants uh, 800 bucks. Let's give him a call. Hi there. I was calling about the uh, 2001 uh, KX that you have in Craigslist. Is that still available? Oh. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I saw the ad was still up, so I thought I'd give you a try. All right. Thanks. So that one didn't work out. Sold it yesterday. I just forgot to take the ad down. Oh, I remember now. Let's see. Scrolling, scrolling. What's that? 69, 175. Woo! No. We'll find something. There's got to be. Ooh, a go-kart? Ooh. I want a go-kart. Classic adult go-kart needs to be your first sold as is. Good condition. And I think it's just a Briggs and Stratton. Hmm. Yeah, I got to stay focused to dirt bikes. Here it is. Look it. How crunchy, nasty this thing is. Ooh, let's give him a phone call. Hi, I was calling about the 2001 YZ250 in Craigslist. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, do you have the dirt bike for sale on Craigslist? Yeah, the Yamaha. You have it. Okay, good. Um, no, I am uh, near Pismo Beach, California. You know Pismo Beach? Okay. Um, yo, yo hablo poquino español, pero tú tienes la motocicleta ahorita? Y cuántos para el motocicleta? ¿Qué la moto necesita? Okay. Okay. Um You sabe tarde hoy? Está bien? Bien. Okay, gracias. Don't make fun of my really jacked up Spanish, but that is really about all I really know. <laughs> but uh, so, 
the dirt bike is available. Uh, he says the motor's stuck, that uh, it's been sitting outside, and I asked him if he'd take 400 bucks. He said maybe, he wants five for sure. I think I need to pop in the truck and go ahead and go take a look at this thing because it looks just like what we're looking for. All right, got the money, got his address, got a couple minutes, go in, see if we can make a purchase on a crunchy bike. Let's go. All right guys, been driving for a little bit now. He was only about an hour away from me. I called him and let him know I am just a few blocks away. So we'll be able to come take a look at this thing. I am hoping he is able to take 400 for it. Um, just because if it is as rough as it looks in the pictures, it's going to need a lot of work. And uh, if you guys are following me on Instagram, at LundomX, of course, then you would already have seen me get this bike because I'm going to be posting this. Obviously, this video is not going to be done for uh, a month, maybe a few weeks. But um, you would at least see the bike and see what we're up against. But so that's future talk. Don't want to talk too much in the future. But we are going... See what is this? 3804. 3804. We need to find 4206. I think we found it. Alright. Hopefully he wants he doesn't mind being on camera. I know he doesn't speak English, but let's Yep. He said he had a blue truck out front. Cool. Let's go see what happens. Hey guys, we're here at his house. Uh, he doesn't want to be on camera and I respect that. I asked him if he wanted to, but he does not mind me taking any photos or video right now. But I have the bike right behind me. Let's take a look. This thing is seriously bad. It is, guys. Oh my goodness. Look at the cobwebs on this thing. Holy mackerel. Oh, look at the clutch. <laughs> look at, it's probably stuck, huh? Like the lever doesn't even go back. Ugh. Wow. This thing is crunchy. Oh, this is nice, huh? Put a zip tie around the fork. That holds the brake line in place. Sweet. Yeah. Pipe's nice and dented and creased. This is what I was looking for. Yep. Plastic is uh, probably not able to be reused. Uh, well, unfortunately, um, can I um, rotate the la motor? Okay. Let's see. He says it's stuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's stuck. But, oh, crunchy rear brake. But we do have some movement oh, that's a bummer man because yes yeah, pro circuit platinum pipe i'm sure at one point was a beautiful pipe um let's see what else we see here uh, yep kill switch can't try that let's see if uh throttle tube stuck oh no got that oh no front brake lever and steel line all the coatings come off of it Wow, this is this is nice, huh? Just the oh, oh, lo siento, the plastic roto. <laughs> Perfect. This is exactly what I am looking for, guys. Um, wow, just look at the state of her boys. Turbine core. He said the tires are still good. Oh my gosh, I don't think so, bud. Sprockets, not bad, but we'll definitely put something better on there. Look at how blown that rear shock is. It's blown. Oil is coming out. Uh-oh. Major problem number one. So, when you don't run your case protectors, as I can tell why he has not, he busted a bolt off in the case, didn't run a case protector, chain came off, 
hit this is part of the clutch actuator and I can almost promise you that's why our clutch is like hard so this thing for sure is going to need a left side case uh, the fuel line has rotted completely off of it wow this is exactly the state I wanted to find a bike in because let's uh, let's be honest yeah. Oh, I think I'm buying this thing for sure. I like that it already has the works connection uh, guards on the sides. I could, that's about the only thing I could reuse at this point. Um, let's see the forks. Are they blistering? Yep. Forks are blistering. The metal. So here in California near the ocean, this is one of the oxidation problems we have with the aluminum. So we're going to need new forks. Wow. All right, let's talk to him. Guys, so I talked to him. He's gonna go run inside. He has the title for this thing, believe it or not. Uh, he has all the paperwork for it to be sold legally. So excited about that. He's gonna go get the papers now. We're gonna exchange the money. We're gonna take this thing home and really shake it down at the shop garage, whatever, and see exactly what this thing needs. It looks like it needs everything, but uh, that's what I want. So let's go. All right, guys, we did it. We are back at the shop garage, whatever. We got the bike. It is so bad let's push it up to the shop and see what we're in for oh my god this thing is so hard to push oh. Oh. <laughs> she's home wow so guys this is going to be a little bit different of a build, obviously. I've searched for wrecked ruined bikes before and brought them back from the dead. If you guys follow the channel for any amount of time, uh, you know uh, what I've done with dirt bikes. But that doesn't mean I want to keep doing the same thing. I do want to change it up a little bit. I do want to put it up to you guys. So. First and foremost, we need to see exactly what is wrong with this engine so I know uh, what things I need to start putting on order for this thing. Uh, obviously it is stuck. So I'm going to pull the gas tank, pull a seat, pull that top end off and see exactly what is torched up there. Hoping, hoping it is the crank. A lot of people out there hope it's a piston. I'm hoping it's a crank because I want to take part the engine anyways. It needs a new case. So we need to replace the case so it needs to be split so if it's just the crank but the cylinder's fine then that means i don't have to buy a new cylinder if the cylinder's bad and i have to split the cases anyway it's getting a new crank it's just adding more to what i need to replace so hopefully the cylinder is okay and it's just the crank that seized but we won't know until we start pulling this pig apart so before we do that let's do one final look over what we got to do any of those curious how the scout's doing it's coming together good getting it all uh oh it runs good got the new v8 in it. it runs good but anyways so just looking this thing over we'll go the other side too one of the things i noticed right away uh as soon as i got it out of the truck is this giant crack in the gas tank that's how sun bleach this thing is so <laughs> uh, there we go that's how sun bleach is saying guys is it's just very very bad this thing so many people would just scrap throw away whatever we grabbed it for 450 bucks which at least the motor repaired is worth 450 bucks and just throw away the rest of it right so man Knowing that that gas has just turned all the gel, like that is seriously like gel in there. It's just basically all the gas has evaporated, leaving just the premix. Oh man, what an absolute turd. Oh, you got a smudge. Let's look at this side. All right, so again, we got a lot of stress cracking on this tank. It wouldn't take much to bust a hole in that either. Again, we got works connection guards. I mean, let's be serious. It's Those are, you know, 60, 70 bucks to buy. It's, it's not like a huge plus, but um, it's gonna help. Um, Kickstarter, 
Now, one thing that I always look for on Kickstarters is how wrecked the Kickstarter is. So if you guys ever go to buy a bike and the Kickstarters are really wobbly like this, that tells me that the bike doesn't start easy. It's probably had many, many miles being kicked over and over and over. And um, it just, sometimes when these bikes, you know, when they get old and, and they don't start as good, people will start kicking and kicking and kicking and kicking. And it really hammers these out. I found bikes older than this where the the kickstarters are like still nice and tight it's not an exact science nor is there any real scientific proof behind it but it seems to be a common de denominator when i find these bikes so uh let's see uh this panel's off not another one no way missing air filter oh i'm gonna bet it's a top end issue guys not another bike this would be the second bike in a row that got ran with no air filter and the frame doesn't seem to be too badly rusted i mean definitely gonna need a powder coating wow guys this is gonna be fun if there's any coolant after all this time i doubt it let's see Ooh, i can actually see coolant in there so pros and cons pro is if there's still water in the system there isn't going to be a ton of corrosion um there still will be corrosion but not a ton if it was dry you would see the whole system would be chalky throughout the whole pump system even though that's going to be all rebuilt guys what are we going to do with this thing all right, boys and girls, so first and foremost, we need to get this top end checked out, see exactly how bad it is. Hopefully, the filter just eroded and, and went away and he didn't ride it with no air filter is the hope. I don't have a high hope right now, but I'm praying the cylinder's okay. Let's take off the seat, take off the tank, uh, upper um, engine mount to the cylinder head, take off the exhaust pipe, and then just the head bolts will be able to take a take just the cap off the top of the cylinder look inside and then that will actually tell us a lot and then we can move if we need more we could take off the cylinder too so let's do that i'm thinking a little persuasion See if this one will come out. Let's see. Let's see. Fingers crossed this side comes out. Because I can tell the sun was focused on this side of the bike. Think that one's gonna come out. Yes, alright. I'm not worried about saving any of the hardware all gonna go oh yeah these have the mid tank bolts good that one comes out we're definitely gonna be hitting a bolt for this project because we're gonna need all new hardware for this beast Ugh. one Don't need the old bolts. See how many spiders are living under this thing. Sorry about the glare on the camera. Sun will be down soon. Oh, on my good shoes too. A nut. On the back side of that and it is fused full of spiders so i'll be able to cut that off later the upper hose clamp is loose that is interesting i don't know why that would be is there water in there 
Yep. Oh, green coolant too. That's good. I bet you the top end is blown. If this hose clamp was not tight, you guys saw it. And they're riding it. It's probably just dripping cooling out of here. Look at that radiator yoke too. Oh, guys, this is not this is not looking good. Let's get these upper radi or upper engine mounts off. I'd like to see if it has spark. And get the exhaust off. Still a lot to do. Oh, come on. Uh oh. Boys. <laughs> oh no. It's just what dripped out, ran out. Oh, the exhaust pipe oh that's not looking good so if you guys are asking yourself you know why don't I just go on Craigslist and find a bike that needs work and just do all the work myself now you know what not to look for you can thank me later oh and the reason why I decided not to do this in the shop garage or whatever is I like the sound of the wind in the microphone for one and I knew this thing was going to spill its guts full of nasty, nasty fluid. So do it outside where I can clean it up a lot easier. So two more motor mounts, a hose, and then some nuts. And we'll figure this thing out. <laughs> now we'll be able to see. Now I can get you guys up close. You ready? You ready? Let's see what horrors this thing has to, to show. Oh, come on. No! Rusted four pieces of what is that? Oh, no. Well, I don't see any bearing material up here, which would typically indicate. I don't know why this thing is stuck, though. It has to be the crank. Let's pull off the cylinder. Gotta cut for that one. I am going to pour a little. WD-40 in the top there to save whatever cylinder is left. Hopefully, hopefully a salvageable cylinder, guys. I might pull off the stator side, see if I can rotate it over. Sounds good. The nut to the stator. I gotta show you guys. Dang it. What the heck I'm doing? So, this is a steely flywheel weight. And behind, like you can't even see where the stator ends and the stator plate, so the flywheel begins and the stator plate is. Like it's so crusted all. The stator is just, oh. Was there a hole in the cover somewhere? Is there a hole? What was this guy doing to this poor thing? I don't see a hole, but that's a lot of water in there. Holy mackerel. Jeez. What did I get myself into? Wow. Obviously. The goal was to put a wrench on the flywheel, but uh, to get the piston at the bottom of the stroke, so it makes it easier to get the cylinder off. But now I don't know what to do. This is going to suck. Big time. But we press forward. So I'm letting our uh, WD-40 marinate up there so it's going to be really difficult to get cylinder off because when the piston is high up in the stroke the cylinder doesn't have much room to come off and truly I should be just trying to get the engine out of the frame at this point That'd, but we're going to see what happens see if I could loosen something up to get the cylinder out 
This is totally not the right way to do it, but I was doing it just to get an idea. I'm gonna need a new cylinder, which as rusty as that thing is, I'm gonna say with a high level of certainty, it's gonna need a new cylinder. But it's okay, we'll send it out, get it recoded. Maybe even do a 325. I don't know. We'll have to find out. All right, guys. So I've literally been tweaking on this cylinder as gently as I can for a while, trying to get it to even lift a little bit off the base, but I can't. This thing is stuck bad. So this cylinder, guys, is not coming without a fight. I am able just get a little tick out of it back and forth. And what it seems to be, and I sprayed this thing a dozen times now with penetrant on this one, but that seems to be where it's stuck unless it's stuck inside the cylinder, which is a high possibility. I'm really trying to be gentle on the cases here, even though we do have to replace this one because that stupid hole right here. I'm going to keep prying away at this and I'll get back with you guys when I make more headway with getting the cylinder off. All right, making some headway. It took two tire irons. Oh no, I see the bottom end and it looks horrendous. Oh, oh. this looks almost irreparable. The cylinder might be okay. It might just be full of water. Never mind. Cylinder's real bad. <laughs> I'm joking myself. This thing needs an entire new engine. Oh, this is no go. Working with this for a thousand hours now. I think. I'm either going to have to, I don't know, I don't know what I got to do honestly, but I don't want to pry against the base here or the cylinder, trying to do it underneath the intake manifold and the exhaust port and just keep wiggling up on it, but it's kind of hit a point now where it's stopped and hit like a rust ridge or something, and it's not going anymore. It's just stuck. <clears throat> hey guys, this is all rust. And if you look on the side of this piston right here, this is what's gluing the cylinder to the piston. This thing is ruined. This bike is ruined. Literally. But I will still push on because I'm not going to give up on this, believe it or not. Just being very diligent not to pry on any surfaces here. Huh. Wow. Oh, jeez. Well, some ding dong put a wise coat crank in this thing so I can guarantee that was probably the start of the problem do not run wise coat cranks guys do not this will happen no bueno honestly I must just admit defeat at this point and remove the engine I am running out of daylight now for that and uh, so I will be picking up on this tomorrow so be on the lookout for another video really really soon but don't end the video here because <sighs> I still 
you know, I'm gonna remove the motor mounts, which I've already put a wrench on and they're impossible. I just tried to get the master link out of the chain and that thing's about welded in there, so I'm gonna have to cut the chain off. And, um, but I think removing the engine as a whole is gonna be a lot easier because that rod is stuck solid and that is going to be a tough job getting this thing out because I'm worried that the swing arm pivot bolt is not gonna wanna back out. I have a feeling it's gonna be rusted in there and it's gonna need to be cut out. So as always guys, thank you so much for stopping by and watching the video today. Make sure if you haven't yet to subscribe because guys, this is gonna be one heck of a build. I even put in my blue earrings for the blue bike. So this is gonna be one heck of a build. I'm not gonna give up on it. We are going to restore this engine and bring it back. But this is what I need from you guys. Go ahead, go on Instagram if you have Instagram. Follow me at LondonMex and throw a vote. I'm going to put a picture up of this bike after I post it here on YouTube. And I want you to put down below what should we do with this thing. Desert bike, woods bike, hill climb, sand drag, uh, freestyle, motard, uh, make it a competitive race bike for someone to race in straight rhythm. I know a couple pros who would like that, but drop it down below um, in, in the in the Instagram, guys. Put a comment in there because I don't know if the comments are back on the YouTube thing yet because they're still mad that I put up the crash footage of Ivan when he was hurt and they said that that was child endangerment. So whatever. Anyways, guys, I love every single one of you guys so, so much. Thank you for stopping by today. Make sure and pop over to Teespring. Check out my Teespring shirts I have. Support the channel. I really appreciate you guys. Like the video if you like this turd. And uh, if you dislike this turd, then still like the video. Because I tell you what, this thing is going to be an absolute handful. Getting this thing apart and brought back to its former glory. Or actually to a better glory. So anyways, come there with me. Go there with me. It's going to be fun. I love you all. I will talk to you guys very, very soon. That's a promise. Peace out for now.